Hello everyone and welcome to the Hollywood Knits Knitting Podcast. This is a podcast all about, you guessed it, knitting and other fiber arts I get up to. Um, today I have, I have no idea how long this is going to be. <laughs> I have been putting this off because we've been gutting the house for baby who is due in less than a month. So, um, we've been very busy and this week I've been meeting to film a podcast and I have been so busy. So uh, yeah, welcome if you are new here and you probably are. I am Hillary. I am a knitter, a spinner, a crocheter, a yarn lover, and um, about to be a mother. <laughs> Not a song, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, so. If you feel like joining me and sticking around, grab a cup of coffee. I have my coffee here on the windowsill and um, I've got a bit to talk about today. I cast off this cardigan, so I guess we'll talk about this first. It wasn't the first thing I was gonna talk about, but I'm wearing it. So this is a self-drafted cardigan. I know my button up here is way too high. I, because I did this. Hello, <laughs> bump. I put my first button here instead of like down here. Um, so it does do up over the bump nicely. I love these green buttons too. I got them from my local yarn store, which is True North Yarn. I love them. Um, I kind of wish I placed them properly. I don't know why I just didn't go back and rip out the button band and redo it. I don't know why I didn't do that. It took me a day to do it. Um, and I'm on that leave already. So like have the time. I think I'm just so excited about my, all my other projects and like baby can come anytime. They're in position. I'm getting a lot of like hot flashes and back pain and like all of the things, all of the things they warn you about that are saying baby's coming in the next few weeks. So, I mean, I could be wrong. Baby could be five weeks away, but they could also be like two to three weeks away and it would all be very healthy and normal and fine. So, um, I think I was feeling a little bit of pressure now that the house has been like gutted with all the old furniture out, all the new furniture in. Baby's room is almost finished. We have to do still the crib and the car seat. Of course, the car seat is like vital because you cannot leave the hospital without a properly installed car seat. So like that's happening this weekend. My husband and I are doing it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, but this is a cardigan <laughs> I knit out so I knit it myself, self-drafted. It's the third one I've ever done, self-drafted. I started doing them back in like September before Rhinebeck because I knew with baby coming, I really wanted to have some cardigans that I knit myself that I can easily open for breastfeeding. Um, and I really just wanted, this is made out of Heartland, Lion Brand Heartland in Mammoth Cove is the colorway. My other one was Grand Canyon. No, Grand Canyon's the beige. Great Smoky Mountains, I think it was called. It's my gray one. So this is the exact same one. I may may have tweaked the odd um, stitch count when casting it on. Um, but yeah, it's just a very affordable, very easy, enjoyable knit. And uh, I think I did on five millimeter needles, so very fast. I mean, I did cast this on in October before Rhinebeck and did not finish it till now. That's only because I just didn't enjoy I don't know. I don't know why. I must have been knitting on something else that was amazing. Gift knits too. I had a very big um, crochet blanket I was doing for a Christmas gift and um, socks for Christmas gifts. And I had a winter cowl I, wanted, I really wanted again, like the holiday higgy cowl or whatever it was. Anyway, I digress. It is done now. I, um, I have two really beautiful, very affordable acrylic washable machine washable so you know poop pee whatever baby throws at this thing it's fine the motion machine is going to deal with it and um it still looks cute it's still hand knit it's just not you know my beloved wools i do get really hot in these though so i may have to take this off <laughs> we'll see um but for now i am loving it it um it's cute and yeah it's so Fun knitting these cardigans that I am on a self-drafted cardigan kick. I have two more planned um, with different yarns and I will get to that today. 
finally going back to my more wooly superwash two strands held together kind of type of vibes for my future cardigans and, and kimonos that I'm self-drafting. I don't know if I will publish any patterns because I have no idea what I'm in for with baby. <laughs> maybe I will. I have them written out in like pattern form. So maybe I'll be able to like whip them up into a PDF and like have different sections of like, if you want to knit with a, you know, a ran weight for five millimeter, do it. If you want to knit with, <laughs> but that's the thing that I have to grade it for sizes. I don't know. I might just throw it all in like the Ravelry um, description. And if, you know, if you're around the same size as me, or you kind of want to tweak it yourself, if you're a bit smaller or bigger and you want to add or then whatever, you can experiment with it. It's really, really simple. Obviously raglan, just very easy construction. Knit till you are happy with the depth under your arms. You can kind of see where I had it on hold. I have this on hold for this sleeve. For some reason you can really tell. I had this on hold from October till January maybe like a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, I picked it back up and was like, I'm getting this done now that like most of the stuff for baby's done and I don't really have anything else to do myself. Like I can't, the rest of the stuff that we have to do, I can't do it by myself. My husband has to help me. So I feel like at this point, I'm like, I have so much knitting time. I gotta get it done. So I went right through it. I quickly got this done off the needles and bought buttons for it after my midwife. My midwife is conveniently located right across the street from True North. So like I popped over one day knowing that I was going to finish this card again and was able to grab these buttons and um, very happy with them. I got some blue ones for my next card again, which I will show you eventually. It is one of my whips. But yeah, so first finished object, self-drafted cardigan. I like it. I like it a lot. Get a sip of coffee. My next finished object is actually a test knit. So I have only done a few test knits in my life. I don't like giving myself deadlines and I don't like confining myself to, you know, a certain gauge or a certain length or color, whatever. I'm very free spirited when it comes to my knitting. I've done, I've knit for 20, over 20 years now. Um, I'm very comfortable with my own gauge, even if my style has changed from continental to English, back to continental, back to flicking English, I don't, whatever it is. Um, luckily for me, I've kept pretty much the solid same gauge throughout the whole time. I'm very comfortable veering off the beaten path and doing my own thing. Um, so I do not sign up for test knits very often, but I have done three. I've done three in the past year and a bit, maybe a year and a half. And they've all been from Molly Conrad, who is White Owl Crochet Co on uh, Instagram. Her designs are beautiful. They just, they're right up my alley. She's local to me. I think she's only like an hour away from me. So it's nice to support local and local designers, local yarn dyers, whatever. I love supporting. So when she put out the tester call for this, um, bandana, I was like, oh, it's beautiful, but I'm not a bandana girl. Like I don't wear that in my hair. I don't like to tie things around my neck. It's just not my forte. But then in the description, she was like, oh yeah, and you can knit it to any size you want. Sold, sold. So this is going to be released February 9th. So nine days away, eight days away, eight days away the day before my husband's birthday. Not that he would want this for his birthday, he won't. Um, but I am so excited to show you. I knit huge, I knit a big shawl. I don't remember the exact measurements, but they are on my Ravelry, so I will have that linked down below. Um, but this is the walnut scarf, shawl version for me, by White Owl Crochet Co, Molly Conrad. Look at this thing, it is, huge it's got such a beautiful cast on Oop, I don't know how I'm gonna show that like the i-cord just wraps around it so beautifully it was such a fun knit I knit this with I think that's my cast off there you can kind of see where I did the Kitchener stitch there um, I knit this with 
drop sky in the color pearl and it is just so lightweight so soft i love the alpaca it's just right up my alley yep i love it i think it's so light and airy and it just oh, i love it i love it i wanted another one so bad already i love lace i was getting a little like this took a long time because i did do a really big size and because this yarn really does it was really hard to get gauge with this yarn it just shrinks like it, it grows when you block it but then it shrinks back down so it'll dry bigger you take it off you wear it a little bit and it just right back to where it was so i am a little bit off gauge in the end um, because my swatch deceived me but i still have a really big beautiful shawl in the end so it's not not a massive deal i don't think um molly really cares either um yeah, there was another person who did a big shawl version too. And you could just tell um, the rate of her like, they're much bigger than mine. But if you stretch mine out, it looks the way it's like, anyway, I love it. I have another quantity of this uh, yarn and stash in like their pink sand colorway, I think it's called, or just pink, I'm not sure. Um, pink sand, I think it's Santa's garden. Um, but anyway, I love this so much. I was actually gonna knit that, knit a Sophie shawl with the other. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think I'm going to knit another one of these because this is perfect for when spring comes and my husband and I, we love going hiking. We love taking our dog to the forest or the trails around the lake. Um, we live right by a lake and it's a pretty big lake and we can walk for literally ever. And so I have been thinking of things I can use when I have baby attached to my chest, but it might be a little chilly for them or you know they might want to breastfeed every two hours, whatever it is. This is such a great thing to have because I can just wear it around open and tie it and then you know have baby with baby's head out or I can use it to cover up if they're wanting to feed and I can you know just peek down and make sure they're okay. I love it so much. It's so so soft. I'll just be devastated if my baby has like a wool allergy. <laughs> like a genuine wool allergy i'll be like no you're going back no <laughs> just kidding baby's not going back um but yeah i absolutely love this it is such a gorgeous such a gorgeous knit and i yeah i cannot wait to snuggle up with this go on long walks with our little our little bub and wrap up in this so has very like, I love the texture of it. it. has a very like almost like kind of hand spun kind of feel. I did buy a ton of this in random colors because I kind of feel like doing either the Traveler Shawl by Andrea Mowry or the Traveler Cowl by Andrea Mowry using this yarn because it does have like a quite a, once you knit it up, it does have like a hand spun kind of look to it, like a rustic look to it. So that might be, that might be what I do with that. So my next finished object is actually a gift knit. So I've been knitting socks for about two years now, two and a half years. I love knitting socks a lot, but I go through phases. This summer, usually summer is like when I want, when I really want to knit socks because they don't pull in your lap and you know, like they're not difficult to carry around in your bag and they're just so small and you just knit away on them. I love them. This summer, however, I had learned how to spin. And I think that took up so much of my time because I was just so passionate about, I just wanted to get good so quickly so I could start knitting with my yarn. Have I knit with my hands spun yarn yet? No, I have not. Um, but I think that's been, that's because I've been, one, my first wheel kind of wasn't plying very well. I didn't love plying on my electric wheel. I don't know why I made such a big, I did buy an Ashford e spinner. Don't know why I made such a big expense for that because I am not an e spinner. I love a treadle wheel and I love a drop spindle. And those are like my two main ways I like to spin. So um, I didn't do a lot of sock knitting this year. And then, <laughs> thanks for chiming in, buddy. <laughs> and then, I just 
after Rhinebeck, I just all of a sudden just wanted to knit socks. The whole way through the holidays, after I had finished two pairs of socks for Christmas gifts, my husband's and my future sister-in-law, Jamie's, um, I didn't want to stop. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll knit Tyler another pair for his birthday coming up. And he loves the socks I knit him for um, Christmas were with the Croy, Patons Croy sock yarn in their blue rag. I think it's called blue rag stripe or blue stripe rag colorway. They're beautiful. So beautiful. I don't know how I I knit him like the 72 stitch, 2.25 millimeter, really long. He's got like size 11 men's feet, 10 and a half feet. So he's got big feet. And I only went through one, I mean, I used a contrast color for the heel and the toe and somehow only used one ball. So I have a whole nother ball, which should get through my socks because they're way smaller, less stitch count and less length. So really hoping I can knit myself a pair of the blue, blue striped rag, blue striped rag. Anyway, um, my mom saw, he's been wearing them like crazy. Like they're his number one socks right now. I wash them once a week because that's how much he wears them. He wears them like three or four times and then I wash them for him. Um, I'm doing my best to keep them out of the dryer, but it's been hard. <laughs> so um, I'm glad he loves them so much and they wear so, so well. Um, and so my mom saw them on his feet and I've been knitting socks, like I said, for almost two years and she didn't even realize that they were hand knit. And when she found out, and then she found out Jamie's gifted socks were hand knit at Christmas time. She was like, I want a pair. <laughs> so my mom taught me to knit when I was nine and she has never really had much of an interest in anything I knit or crocheted. She kind of was like, oh, it's, you know, it's beautiful. But then I'd make it for her and she wouldn't like the way it looks on her. She's um, one of those people who really needs to try their clothes on before they buy them. So it's hard to want to and we're not the same size. So, I mean, unless I did like a sweater and I wear a lot of oversized sweaters. So like I could knit her sweater if she hated the way it looked, I can just take it back and wear it myself. It's fine. Um, but I generally have a big reluctance to knit for people who are so picky in the way things fit and feel. I don't want to waste like a hundred hours of my time and a lot of money and a lot of skill to, you know, have someone just be like, eh, you know, I don't like the way it fits. Well, that sucks. This is not a garment that you can just try on at the store and walk away with. So, um, socks are easy. <laughs> she doesn't like the socks. I can take them back or you know what? She can just keep them. You know, I want to be able to knit her things because she did teach me to knit. So, um, the fact that she really wanted a pair of socks and striped like his, she loved his socks. She was obsessed with his socks. So I had done a big birthday haul for Mary and Maxim. One yarn brand that really just sticks out to me all the time is Patons and I love their Croy sock yarn so much. So when I received a gift card for Mary and Maxim for my birthday and I saw that they had a crazy amount of colorways from Patons Croy, I had to stock up. So I did and as soon as my mom showed interest in these socks, I was like, I know I have the exact, like it's the exact same line because they're striped the same way, but the perfect colors for her. And so I knit her a pair of socks. They are so cute. I think this is a sidewalk chalk stripes. I think they're called just very, just more her than the colors that Tyler had that I knit for my husband. So very beautiful, just, very, very cute. I think I just still did the same um, contrast, heel and toe. Um, I think this is Drops for Belle. It's either Drops for Belle or Santa's Garn. I think this, might, this one might actually be Santa's Garn. But anyway, they turned out beautiful. Here's the second sock. I did match hers because my mom, so I did match the stripes perfectly. So I did actually end up going over. I went over a ball. So Tyler somehow has way bigger feet than my mom, way more stitches than my mom. And I did the same contrast heel and toe. And I went over a ball for her, I think because I had to match them. She's a perfectionist. I knew if they were not matched stripe for stripe the whole way, she might notice. The only difference is for whatever reason, I don't know why, down here where he reached the toe, I got, I got the green in on this one and not in on this one. And I don't know if that's like maybe the yarn 
I don't think it would be a gauge thing. My gauge looks pretty even. I always count my stitches with stitch markers, so not quite sure what happened here. Um, but yeah, they're beautiful and I think she's going to love them. So that's her Mother's Day gift this year. Um, it's a pair of socks. My last finished object is a very special one. It's special how it came together and it's special now that it's almost finished. I need to block it, um, but it is finished. I just need to weave in a few ends and block it. But I really wanted to have my baby's blanket done before we went to the hospital so I can bundle them up in it. Um, and so I had purchased three big balls of the Hayfield Spirit DK in like bliss colorway, which is this beautiful cream to sage green to dark sage green and then back again, like beautiful. I had started knitting a really gorgeous lace blanket, which I soon realized I do not have the brain power for right now. Um, I was messing up all the time and the pearl rows were so long because it was over 120 stitches, 130 stitches I think I had. And then with the striping, the in and out fading of the stripes, it just didn't suit that blanket pattern. I definitely want to knit that blanket pattern because it's beautiful. And, um, but I just think it would lend itself better to a softer, more, I don't know, solid color or like a speckle or just a very, very lightly variegated tonal, nothing super, super drastic like that. So I frogged that, which was sad. I was so excited about it and then I cast on again a beautiful shells baby blanket by Lahoma Jane Nelly and this is a very generic shell um, square pattern grows from the center so for something that changes color like that like self striping growing from the center is so beautiful so I was like, perfect, I'm gonna do that. And I used a, I think I had a 4.5 or five millimeter crochet, five millimeter crochet hook for the DK. And it was just, I got pretty far. I got through the whole first ball and into the second when I kind of just got this feeling like this isn't right. This doesn't feel right for my baby's first blanket. It's really, really thick. And even though there's holes in it from like the lace, the crochet lace, it still just felt like I don't know. It just felt too much, maybe too thick, like they were gonna suffocate under it. Um, I'm still gonna finish it and maybe have it as more of like a throw around the house or like behind their crib or off the side of the crib or something like that. They're not in their crib for, I'm probably not gonna have them in their crib for about six months at least. They'll be in the room with us. We have a little bassinet in there for baby. So um, yeah, I just, didn't want to waste any more time on it. I you know I only have a few more weeks left before baby's here and I really want to enjoy that time as much as I possibly can. I'm lucky to be off work already and I just want to relax and enjoy the time knitting and doing the things that I love before baby's here. And so I was really kind of bummed because I desperately want my baby to have a handmade blanket by me so I kind of just sat back and thought, what do I have in my stash that's softer, that's lighter, that maybe I could crochet that blanket with them, with for them. So it was convenient that this is the week after we went through our entire house. We got a dumpster, we filled it with junk and furniture and things we weren't gonna keep, things that weren't worth donating. And we have cleaned every nook and cranny of our home every single drawer and cabinet and cupboard and closet has been completely all the shelves everything has been cleaned wiped down dusted vacuumed and then organized and so i know where everything i own is every single thing i own i know where it is that feels so amazing the way that makes your brain just like like just i know there are books about it like you know, look at something and if you haven't used it in a year, toss it or if you know, whatever, you have no sentimental value to it, get rid of it, whatever. It freaking works, okay? <laughs> like it is so freeing, especially when you have baby brain 
and you have a million things on your mind and you're getting close to delivery so you're nesting nesting is a real thing it's not a joke it is a real freaking thing and holy heck and bob like i just I had no energy, lethargy, fatigue, like crazy. And still all I want to do 24 seven was clean my house and organize things for this child. So, um, I'm kind of through it now. The only things we have left to do are the crib and the car seat, like I said. So really we are through almost everything except for the blanket. But the good thing is with this new blanket that I had no yarn to do with, I had just gone through my whole entire yarn stash. I got rid of yarns that I have had for years that I don't know, I don't think I'll ever wanna use. And I kept all the yarns that are precious to me. And I made a list of everything I had in stash and like patterns that can be used for them, how much I have, everything. So I am organized. And I knew I had a couple of balls of Malabrigo Arroyo, it's their sport weight, super wash, merino base, super, super lightweight, super soft, beautiful yarn. And I thought to myself, that's great yarn for a baby blanket perfect and so and I knew it just magically fit that these two so last year I really tried not to buy any yarn unless it was for a specific pattern um, and I had bought these two colorways in Arroyo for specific patterns and the colors just didn't work I didn't get rid of the yarns I didn't return the yarns I just kept them and um, decided you know like one day I'll do a cowl or a shawl or something and this will, you know, I'll need it for something and it'll be here because I'm never going to not love Malabrigo. The colors were a very beautiful bluish teal and a very beautiful light pink. Perfect for a gender neutral baby blanket. So I went stash digging and I found those two. And then I thought, okay, that's definitely not enough to get through a whole blanket especially with crochet. Um, so I kind of went through other areas of my stash where like I knew I had some skeins that just like were souvenir skeins or you know whatever sock skeins I can hold double or something I don't know. And I ended up finding <laughs> that the yarn that matched this pink and blue perfectly like blended them perfectly was the Rhinebeck exclusive colorway for Miss Babs this year called Morning Glory. And I had 200 yards of it. So a mini skein of Yowza DK that I just bought for no reason. I just bought it because it was so beautiful and I couldn't stand to walk away and not have it. So I was able to cast on my baby's blanket. <laughs> it's so big. So yeah, I have done the blanket. So as you can see, I start in the center with the Morning Glory from Miss Babs and it is just the perfect color. It's just so perfect to match these. And so I have Malabrigo Arroyo Rosalinda and then Malabrigo Arroyo, I think it's called Greenish Blue. I think it's actually what it's called, Greenish Blue. And the reason I didn't use it, I bought it for my Quattro wrap and I didn't use it because it just wasn't teal enough and then I really wanted aguas which is my favorite color from them but it has new competition because I ran out of yarn way before I wanted to actually finish this blanket so I realized that I did actually have to buy a new skein to finish this project and so I did some research into colorways from Malabrigo that might work and ended up with this one called Flavia and it's like it's just, it's got some purple and green, some minty, minty bluey green, purple blend. It kind of shows up very gray on the camera, but it is the perfect color to blend. You almost can't even see the difference. So there we are. I have finished my baby's blankie. So now I just have to block it. It's gonna grow quite a bit. It is, I think it's pretty big for a baby's blanket. And if I ever, you know, wanna grow it out for them, I can always just get more Malabrigo Flavia and just go around for another couple squares or squares, another couple of um, like shell repeats to make it a little bit bigger for them. But it will grow quite a bit, I think, when I wash it. So I have not washed it because I have been waiting to show it to you. Um, but yeah, this took me like two weeks and I still had to take a break, like a few day break to wait for the yarn to come in to finish it. But I'm so happy with it. It's so soft, it's so lightweight. 
I can't wait to wrap my baby up in it. <sighs> so excited. That brings us through my finished objects and now we can move on to whips. So I finished this cardigan. It was the last thing I did finish. And then I was just in a moment where I was like, okay, well, um, I finished my cardigan and I literally have nothing else on my needles other than my muscle burrow, which I always have on the needles. But it was a weird, very weird evening to, it was like 8.30 at night and I finished this, got my buttons attached and I had nothing else to start knitting on other than my hat, <laughs> which is ridiculous to say. But I always have muscle burrow on my needles, so it felt really weird. And I didn't have any of my future, like I have all my future cast ons, like ready to, like, like ready to go in terms of like, I know what I'm using and I have it in my house, um, but I didn't have them in project bags yet. I didn't have my needles ready yet. I didn't have them wound up yet. So it was kind of like, I'm not doing that at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. I'm tired. <laughs> I have like an hour and then I'm gonna go to bed. So it was really, really weird to do that. And I was like, okay, well pull out your Nintendo Switch and play for a bit or go hang out with your husband and play games with him or like um, watch a show together or something. Like you don't have to go read a book, like go have a bath and read, I think is what I actually ended up doing. I brought my Kindle into the bath and I just sat in there and read. Um, I have had some really, not horrible hip pain. I just feel like, my hips feel like they're dislocating. <laughs> Now that baby has dropped, I actually feel much better now that baby has dropped. Like I'm not bloated as much and my rib cage, I can breathe again. It's so lovely. Um, I think I know most women feel worse when their baby drops, but I'm like, as soon as they did, I was like, oh my gosh, my bras fit me again. I can breathe. I can eat. Oh, it feels, it's great. Pelvic pain, not great, but it's mild. So it's not a big deal. Anyway, tangent, baby tangents. Um, yeah, it was weird. It was a weird moment. Um, so I think I just decided to take a break and have a bath and read. I think I brought out my spindle and I spun on that a little bit because I do have, um, a spindle project right now that spindle, like if I'm spinning up a hundred grams gain on a spindle, that takes like a few months to get through for me because I don't exclusively spin every single day. So, um, I knew I had like 40 grams of a braid to spin up. So I was like, okay, I'll work on that. I'll have a bath, I'll read, I'll go to bed. We'll wake up in the morning. We'll get all our yarn organized. We'll get everything spun up, wound up into cakes and put away and bagged with their needles so that when I go into labor, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous to say, when I go into labor, I'm not gonna be worried about my knitting, but like I would be because that's like how I take care of my mental health. That's how I like, I mean, I run too, but I can't run. That's the thing, I can't run for the past like month and a bit, I haven't been able to run. Um, and I can't run after I deliver a baby for at least a couple of months, I think I have to wait. So that's like one of the ways I really do take care of my mental health is through my running. Um, I'm definitely gonna be able to walk my baby around, walk my dog around, that helps. It's just not the same as running. Running, just the endorphins I get from it are just wild and I love it. Um, and I've definitely been feeling a little bit not like myself. And I, that could also be pregnancy, hormones changing, such a big change in life, being so exciting for some, excited for something, but not really knowing what the change is gonna be like. It's wild and it's beautiful and it's great. But at the same time, my mind does trail off to my knitting quite a lot because that's how I, take care of myself every day. You know, that's like my little slice of me time is working on my knitting. And so not having anything on the needles, not having anything set up, I just knew that I'm gonna have to, you know, get my next like, I don't know, five projects wound up, caked up, put in bags with the needles, with motion pouch, everything that I want. Just put it away, have it ready to go, so that I can just pick it up beside the bed. I'm, ha I'm gonna have it in a basket beside my bed so that I am gonna, my husband really wants me to do this like five, five, five thing, rule after you deliver your baby or you have a C-section, whatever, however you have your baby, you need to recover. You need to prioritize your recovery. And as someone who knows, like as an athlete, um, 
progress is made in your recovery. So it is so important. It impacts everything in your life. If you are not recovering in time, you are not gonna reap results. Um, so I think the same for me is, especially because I wanna breastfeed, I know recovery is so important. So the idea of spending 15 days in my bedroom is so depressing. Um, I know my husband's gonna be in there all the time too because he's gonna be infatuated with, he's gonna be in love with his baby. I know that um, and so am I. But I'm also very much like an outdoor person and so it's gonna be hard for me. But he wants me to do the five five rule where you do five days in bed, five days on bed and then five days around your bed. And then you can kind of go out into the world and do more things. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. And so I want my little basket beside my bed to be full of project bags so that I can just pick up my knitting, you know, and have projects that are like already cast on and established so that I can just pick one up and just go for it and not really have to like consult a complicated pattern or think too hard <laughs> or, you know, anything like that. In terms of whips, I, I think, my first whip is my muscle bra. So this one, I didn't have to cake up and cast on. It's already been cast on. I've got my little sheepy dudes from Fox and Pine Stitches on Etsy. Um, and yeah, so this is Malabrigo Sock in Pearl 10. It's just this really beautiful. It's almost striping on the camera. It's really beautiful. And I'm going to do one skein. I'm hoping that I can do a folded brim with this one. We'll see. I don't know. I'm gonna have to pay really close attention to make sure that I can do that. Um, but it is coming along really, really nicely. I, it's kind of looking a little bit wide for me. It might be a little bit big for me, but I know my husband also likes to take these and wear them. And this is more his like color too. So it's kind of almost like an eggplanty kind of like purple undertone, like dark, dark variegated, I don't know, tonal, tonal black. It's called Pearl 10. I don't know if I said that. I probably didn't. I said Malavrigo Sock for sure. Don't know if I said Pearl 10, but it's really, really beautiful. And I think I'm almost like, I'm almost at the halfway point and I'm not quite to the halfway point on um, the ball. So I think I'm gonna be okay for a folded brim. Not sure, but I'm using my three millimeter needles and it's going quite well. Not much else to say about this one. Um, I like having it on the needles for on the go knitting, especially when I don't have socks on the needles, which I almost always have socks on the needles. I have a whole dedicated sock bag. So yeah, anyway. My next cast on is my next self-drafted cardigan. And this one I am using, uh, I don't have very much on going on it. It's very like brand new cast on. I've got my little penguins <laughs> from um, Fox and Pine Stitches on Etsy. And I'm using uh, Cascade 220 Superwash Waves in their um, blues colorway. And so it really is quite blue. I don't have a lot of blue in my wardrobe, but I think I don't know, I think it's gonna make a really nice cardigan. Um, so I'm gonna do the bulk of the cardigan like this. I am doing 4.5 millimeters, so I did drop down a size. I've got some really beautiful dark blue, um, big acrylic plastic buttons for this. So I'm gonna do the body like this. I'm gonna do the bottom ribbing of the hem with a darker navy blue solid, and then the button band with a darker navy blue solid and then the arms will just be all of this and I'll kind of go through waves of different blue hues. I'm really excited for it. The only alteration I did for this one was I added a few stitches because it is not the same gauge. This five millimeter Aran weight. That is more of like a light worsted, kind of a DK weight. So I did four, four, 4.5 millimeter needles. I am knitting, um, I am trying to knit a tighter tension with it um, so I don't have to drop down a needle size. So yeah, I am happy with it. It's something that's I'm doing, the only other alteration I'm doing is um, instead of doing raglan increases, I'm doing yarn overs and I am still increasing along here for the panels so I can button it up. So it's beautiful. I'm going to love it when it is done. 
and it's not something nice and easy that I can just whip out and knit on and not think about because I've done so many cardigans a million times over. So my next project will not come as a surprise to anyone because I love socks. This is my first pair though, ever, of DK weight socks. I've got these guys, which are not from Fox and Pine. I think I bought these from Dragon Horde Yarn last November on Black Friday. These cute little dragons. I love them. I have some darker teal ones too. And then I got these, which they match my project so well. So this is a DK weight sock yarn from Color of My Fiber in the mosaic colorway. I am doing a three by one ribbing and I am through the heel now and into the foot. I cast these on last night and I'm already like almost, almost through the first sock. So not much to say there. It's a simple vanilla sock. And this is the yarn. It doesn't even look like I've used any of it. And I am through almost the first sock. So that's really, really cool. I have that in my little lion, I think it's lion brain or loops and threads, loops and threads project bag. I don't think they sell these anymore, but I really like them. That's like my designated sock bag. I always keep my socks in there. That sock yarn, I will say though, as gorgeous as it is, it is very soft, which I think will pill. It's a 75-25 base, um, but I don't know. I just feel like it's so soft that it has to pill, but we'll see. I'm gonna wear them for a while. I have lots of uh, lots of Color My Fiber uh, DK weight socks in my um, stash because she's local. I like to support local <laughs> and she ships them vacuum sealed. So storing those is like takes up no space no brainer i'm going to buy them so we'll see if i like them then i can knit more and if not then that yarn will be used for like cowls and stuff like i think i bought some of them her colorways are really beautiful and unique and i bought some of that um dk weight yarn for like andrea mallory shawls which i've never knit an andrea mallory shawl wait no no no. i have i've knit her shawls before but i've never knit one of her cowls and i desperately want one of her like kerchief cowls i love that style so much so it just just depends on when i'm actually gonna get around to casting it on i probably will do with the drop sky because i just love the texture and feel of that and so lightweight i would love to do a traveler shawl in that my dog agrees. Blowing through these cast-ons that I <laughs> have done in the past couple days. So this one, I barely have anything done on it and all my yarn's tangled up, which is lovely. Um, this is my first ever Sophie shawl. And I am not very far into it, clearly, um, but it's just a beautiful purpley lavender texture. I am holding double. Uh, Malabrigo sock in Ursula which is just this gorgeous I fell in love with this yarn colorway I mean it doesn't really show up shows up really dark on camera it is more purple and like beigey hued bluey hued I'm holding it double with drops um brushed alpaca in lavender and it's really creating this beautiful texture it's very soft I love brushed alpaca. I have quite a few projects coming up using it. Uh, I found quite a bit in my stash left over from other projects and some that I just randomly bought for other shawls that were never cast on. And I just decided I wanted a simple Sophie shawl. I just wanted something that, um, oh, project bag. This is a Janie Crow. Um, I think this is a lantern. So the magical lanterns um, blanket she has. And she has it like printed on bags and you can buy them and they're great. They're really cute. Anyway, um, I really just wanted like a simple shawl like that. I've always wanted a Sophie shawl, not gonna lie. I always did, but I needed, I needed to have it with something held double. I feel like such a simple shawl for me really needed to either have like really amazing yarn, high, like being the highlight of it, or something fuzzy held with it. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't throw a garter shawl around my shoulders if it were just plain. I'm weird. <laughs> I like to show off knits that are a little bit more complicated. Um, that's just me. I'm just weird like that. Um, or maybe it was because it was super, super trendy. Hi, baby. Hi. Hey, baby. Being a good boy. Um, 
he's knocking over the camera. You tell me I'm done now? It's been 48 minutes, mom. You're done. It's, uh, it'll be a nice, I mean, I, I would ideally like that one to be done before baby comes because, um, I don't know. I just, I would love to be wrapped up in it, but also I get so hot that I'm like, will I? It's not even cold here. It's like, it's in the positives. We're not getting really, really, really cold weather. And like, again, we get snow in April sometimes. So there's still a chance for this freezing cold weather to get here. There's still a chance. I am not saying, knock on wood, but I'm not saying that winter's not going to come to us. It definitely probably will. Um, and then I'll get a chance to wear that, but, I don't know. I haven't um, been knitting on it a ton. Obviously I just started it, had one sitting and then I showed it to you. So it really isn't, um, I don't know. It's not a huge priority, but I also don't want to leave anything sitting and not use it. I did buy more of that lavender brushed alpaca for specifically that yarn. I had the Malabrigo sock Ursula I had four, I have four skeins of it in stash and that pattern is going to take up two. And then the other two are kind of just in a big bag um, that I have of random Malabrigo sock skeins, which I don't use Malabrigo sock for socks. Um, I use it for shawls and sweaters and things. So I really would like to get that one done because I know I will wear it. Um, I love the brush alpaca. And this lavender colorway doesn't have as many guard hairs in it as like my sage colorway did. I don't know why. It's just, it's a bit softer than that one. So um, I feel like it will get a ton of wear because it's not gonna be, not that it, it, my other one's not itchy. My green shawl that I designed with the sage colorway with the brush alpaca is not like it's still super super soft especially after blocking oh my goodness it's so drapey and soft and luscious i can sleep in it but um i feel like this one will be even softer because of it and it's such a loose gauge five millimeter so that being said i really would like to get it done before baby's here because yeah who knows we're gonna be at the hospital for a few days probably and um it might be nice to have there to wrap myself in when I, if, I'm, if I'm chilly <laughs> or I probably won't be chilly. I am such a warm person. I have great blood circulation. I am hot all the freaking time, uh, especially being pregnant. I am, I'm getting hot flashes all the time. Um, and apparently after when your hormones drop, you also have hot flashes and sweats. So that's wonderful. I am on my drop spindles on my last little bit of um, this beautiful woodland colorway by, um, Smallfish Yarns, a local dyer or Canadian dyer. I don't know if they're local. They also ship vacuum sealed. So a whole hundred gram braid vacuum sealed is amazing for storage and amazing for keeping, uh, moths out of your stash. I have had a couple moths this year, not so much going after my yarn, going after my fiber. Um, and luckily all my fiber is like, I, I literally store everything in double sealed freezer bags and I squeeze all the air out of them and try to like vacuum seal as much as I can. And so when I get, um, yarn dyers who ship vacuum seal, I'm like, amazing. It's done for me. It's actually like super, super flat. So I can stack, like store it and take up zero space. It's wonderful. I feel like I didn't even buy anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, whoop, I am the spindle. Sorry. I should talk about that. The spindle is really beautiful. It has all these different colors on it. Um, this was made by top of the world. She is local to me as well. I got a couple of spindles from her. She custom made this for me, um, because I just loved the colorful wood. And so she custom made this for me to the weight that I wanted, which I think was 45 grams. Um, so probably my, more my heavier side of spindles. Uh, I could still spin really quite fine um, with it, so not a problem. Um, I just cast this one on. This is my last 25 grams that I have to spin up before I can ply. So I've already spun up 75 grams 
on drop spindles in the past like three months since I got back from Rhinebeck, I think. Um, I've been using my Bosworth spindles for this spin and then one of these. So um, yeah, I am, I am excited to get this finished. The only qualm I have with this spindle here, and it's not on my other one, she put the notch here, which I asked for on my whirl, but then she's got the hook facing the notch. When I go to drop it and spin, I catch it and then I have to go like that and it's just not, it falls out all the time. I prefer when the notch in the whirl is on the back side, lined up with the back side. And all my other spindles are like that. Even the other one, she made me two identical. So she made me another one identical to this. Um, it just doesn't have a different color whirl. It has the same color the whole way around. And the notch is on the rear of this. So I don't know why this one isn't. It's dropped a few times. I mean, if it breaks, she's local. So it's not a huge deal. I can always just message her and get her to make me another one. But yeah, I don't love that. And there's no way of turning this. Like I'm, I can't turn this um, hook without probably breaking it. So yeah, that kind of sucks, but I still have been enjoying spinning with these a lot, um, just as much as my Bosworth spindles. So yeah, I am very happy with this. I do have one wheel spin going on my, ma on my Malibrino Rose, no, on my uh, Magicraft Rose that I got at Rhinebeck. And um, I have, I am spinning finer than I've ever spun before, which is amazing. And I totally lend that to, and consistently as well. And I totally lend that to the wheel. The wheel is magical. Um, and I am using um, Bramble Ridge Fiber, Randall Rib, Bramble Ridge Farms, local, local in terms of Canadian. She's not local to me, she's out west. But she does, she's very Instagram famous now for this colorway called Duck. And she does it on her yarn, she does it on her different fibers. Anyway, I got it, I got two braids of this um, when Jackie from Knitting a Good Yarn podcast talked about it and then she spun it up beautifully um, and did a pressed flowers cardigan with it and it, I was sold. I immediately went on to Etsy and bought two braids, not knowing what I was gonna use it for at all. <laughs> knowing it's probably gonna end up in a shawl or a cowl. Um, I cast it on, cast it on, I don't know how, you, I just started spinning on it, spinning it on my wheel as thin as I can get it so I can kind of get more of a fingering sport weight yarn for a really nice um, color work cowl that I was going to do that I'm not even gonna mention the pattern because I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I'm not committed to it anymore. I really don't know what I'm gonna do with these two skeins. And I really wanna knit with my hand spun. I have not knit with my hand spun yet. And it's bugging me. I really think I should be. So I was gonna also film this week a, um, not spinning update, but like a year of spinning, but I, I started spinning in April. So maybe this April, May, I'll sit down and um, I'll film like a year in spinning review and I'll talk about, I'll show you like my original yarns that I got off my EW Nano and then I'll go through like the progression I've made. And maybe by then, hopefully by then, maybe I'll have some um, hand knit, hats or some cats hats not cats maybe i'll have some hand knit projects to show off or some fo's to show off we'll see uh, at least one i just i need to at least within the first year of spinning actually knit with my hand spun i just think it's so a shame that i haven't um i know there are other people who are new spinners who literally used their hand spun right from the get-go they didn't save that first game they used it right away and i think Penrose Knits, um, Laura Penrose, she picked up, the same reason I picked up a drop spindle was from Andrew Mowry's video. She also picked up a drop spindle, a Turkish drop spindle, because of that video that Andrew Mowry posted. And I mean, she, that was her first uh, time at spinning and she got this thick and thin yarn that I would never even think to even use. And she used it in a color work sweater for her girl, her little girl, and it's beautiful. And it's like, Knitting does hide a lot of that like thick and thin you get with spinning. 
And here I am spinning like yarns that are actually really consistent and really beautiful. And I'm just like putting them on my shelf and walking away on to the next thing. And I really wish that I could get rid of this divide in my brain that I have where I'm like dividing spinning from knitting. I really wish I could break that and just be like, I'm spinning for my knitting and then shop through my hand spun stash as well. Um, so this Rambouillet, I think it's Rambouillet, is it? This is BFL comb top actually. It's super, super soft. I would like to ideally use this one. It's, I think it's gonna be a really beautiful like tonal in the end, I think. It's not quite, um, it's not gonna be like a, a fractal or anything like that. I think it's gonna be really beautiful variegated in the end and I would really like to use it in an Andrea Mowry cowl, whether I do, um, I don't know, <laughs> whether I do the, um, her mosaic one, what is that one called? The shifty cowl or the shift cowl, whatever it is. Um, I might do that one and just throw some random hand spuns all together and do it. I've seen so many beautiful renditions of that with hand spun and you can tell that it's thick and thin in certain places and it just looks great with that, with that texture. So, and I've heard it's so much fun to knit. So I think I'm gonna do that. We'll see, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't wanna commit because I'm like, it's my hand spun. It already is a finished object, but at the same time, I'm spinning to knit, okay? I spin to knit and I wanna actually spin to knit. Um, I don't think I'm at the level yet where I would like to do, where I would do a sweater. I would like to do a sweater. I'm not quite at that level yet. And I don't know if I really am going to have the time going into motherhood to donate to actually spinning a sweater quantity, but shawls, cowls, I can do that. Hats, I can do that. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll spend another like year getting better. And then Rhinebeck 2024, maybe I will get myself uh, a sweater quantity of fiber to spin. I just, I'm not sure any spinners watching, how do you, how do you like figure out how much, how many grams you need for a sweater? Because that's my biggest reservation with spinning for sweaters. I know that I can, I know certain techniques to make your yarn more even towards the end, um, like spinning your first bobbin with your last bobbin, or, you know, like vice versa, like mixing up your bobbins, not knitting them, not spinning them all, or not plying them all together, in, you know, in order, um, but all, and also keeping, keeping um, finished skeins close by so you can make sure you're matching your grist and everything like that. Um, I know that, that kind of stuff, and I'm not worried, really worried about it. And what I'm worried about is spinning up a sweater's quantity and just not having enough. That is what I'm worried about. So let me know if you're a spinner, if you know what your technique is for that. I've, I've tried Googling things and looking things up and asking Reddit and whatever, and I'm just not getting a clear enough answer that like it's computing in my brain. Maybe the baby brain is just not letting me think about that right now because it's not really a priority but it is a dream of mine it is a goal for 2024 to at least start a sweater spin i don't have to finish a sweater but i would like to start one find a pattern i really like that would lend itself really well to hand spun and spinning for that the last thing i'm going to talk about um is a future cast on that i actually just thought up right before it actually delayed me in filming a little bit today because we're running out of sunlight here we don't really have any sunlight anyway um but <laughs> i i bought a few zauber balls before the holidays in sales black friday sales whatever for just a hand spun kind of you know um spin cycle kind of look for certain patterns. Anyway, don't actually, it was the first purchase I made this year. It was like my Christmas gift to myself. I don't have patterns for these. I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I just bought them because they're beautiful and they were on sale. And I've wanted a coveted Zauber ball for a while. They're just not really locally available to me. Um, 
And I'm just like flipping through my phone today. I found a beautiful cardigan. I really want to knit, but it's available in like a magazine. The magazine's not out yet. I have to spend $30 on the magazine in order to get the pattern. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> that was disappointing. Um, but I then came across an old photo that I've had saved in my like Knitspiration album in my phone. And it's this beautiful stole, like sideways, like knit, I don't know how you call it, lateral knit, I don't know, uh, stole. And it goes from like a color changing ball and garter striped with like stockinette and lace in a solid color. Anyway, I've had that saved on my phone for like three years now and I have not knit it yet. And I thought that is a great like little shawl to wear too when I'm out and about with baby and I need to like cover baby up for breastfeeding or whatever it is we need to do. Nice breathable lace, beautiful. I've wanted to knit it. Looks like it's a joy to knit as well. And it would be perfect for a Zauber ball. <laughs> so I am going to use this beautiful guy. Has some beautiful like jewel tones in it and it's just earthy and gorgeous. I am not sure what colorway it is. Everything, it's the Zauber ball Stark 6. But honestly, I don't know like I, they don't have like the color on it and everything's not in English. But that's kind of like the color change you get there with really bad lighting. <laughs> so I'm going to be knitting, I will push, put a picture up, the Sherry Stole by Tabitha Hedrick. It was released, I think, in conjunction or collaboration with Sweet Georgia Yarns. Again, supporting Canadian. And the, so this is gonna be like the um, color changing colorway and then I'm going to use Malabrigo Sock Shocker in pearl because I just have this in stash and it was a part of my original baby blanket which I decided to ditch and I'm not doing anymore um so I decided I'm going to use this since I have two balls of it you only really need one but I might make it mine a little bit bigger a little bit wider so you know it could be a cover-up for baby and I so anyway um yeah this will be like the lace solid sections and then this will be like the color changing section so very excited for this one. Um, I was like, you know, maybe I won't talk about it because, you know, it, I just thought about doing this. And a lot of the times when I get these like, and I'm far away away from it. I have so many cast ons right now that need to take priority. I do not need to cast on another shawl until at least I'm done the Sophie shawl. And then I can cast this on because this is more spring. The Sophie shawl I'm doing is more winter appropriate. So I'm holding my horses. <laughs> I might get this caked up. Or I might pull out the one I have already caked up and then just leave this one. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm not that far, but super excited. I might still throw this in a project bag with um, some needles. So it's like beside the bed and ready to go if I so choose to whip this out and work on it. If I really feel like I want some simple lace and I want just a comforting shawl project um, but I will not allow myself to cast on until my Sophie shawl is done. So, <laughs> uh, I love it. Anyway, done. That is everything I have to show you today. Um, sorry, I was quite rambly. I didn't even have that much to show you and I was still rambling on and on and on. My brain is going a mile a minute today. I've had a super fatigued week. I think I'm just burnt out from all of the housework we've been doing for baby that now that I'm like free to think about my knitting, I'm just like pew, crazy. So <clears throat> thank you for listening if you've made it this far. Let me know what you're knitting on down below. Um, yeah, and I will, I will see you next time, hopefully with some finished objects. So bye guys.